Brothers, this is Dr. Phil Chavez of the Men's Academy. I got a couple of phone calls today, or actually two phone messages, of two men leaving some very long messages about their concern for the political climate right now that we're living in. This new year is going to present some real political challenges, uh, sociological. I think we're going to be challenged on a number of levels. I have, um, I wrote down some of the notes of a buddy of mine who did call and left, um, a guy who worked with the men's ministry, left me a long message about his concern. And I want to read part of this before I, I give an answer and a response, and he, he specifically asked me to give him some kind of input. He says here, there's been a lot of talk about politics since the elections and everything that has happened, a lot of anxiety. I'm trying to remain positive. I'm not talking about politics so much, even though I love talking about it. But I'm trying to stay away from the negativity, especially from yesterday. There's a lot of confusion. I'm trying to stay away from social media. I'm also trying to stay away from television. It's hard not to feel anxious. I'm really confused on how to talk to my family, how to keep things positive. Just the betrayal of members of Congress, how they turned their backs on the president. The whole political situation is very sad. It's very disheartening. Our country is really going in a scary direction. Those who have full control of the government now, it's very scary. Just reaching out to you if you have anything to say that's helpful or positive. I try to think of times, I try to think of the times of the apostles of Jesus Christ, of things that, when things were really bad. And they were able to yet convert many through their faith, testimony, prayer, and through martyrdom. If it could be done then, it could be done now. What a scary time, a really scary time. Sometimes I talk a good game about being faithful in times of persecution, but now that persecution could be at our doorstep. This is different. Now that I see this as a real possibility. Anyways, I just want to hear some good news. Just reaching out to see if you have anything encouraging to say. Brothers, Jesus Christ did come upon this earth at a very difficult time in history. I remember a meditation of Alphonse Liguori saying that uh, Christ did come at one of the most wicked times in the history of the world. But at a time of great darkness came a great light. And that's what Jesus Christ came for, to be that light to all of us. Now he was that light through what he said, what he did, what he accomplished through his passion, death, resurrection, through the church he established. Gentlemen, we too are called to be that light in the image of Christ. That's why we're here. It's our ultimate goal of what God really wants us to become for ourselves while we walk here on earth. We got to show who he is. We are his body. We're his embodiment. We've got to be the ones to show the change, to show the light of Christ. Otherwise, how else will people see us? So moving forward, gentlemen, I think this will be a difficult year for our country. It will be trying. And I think uh, it just remains to see what you are going to do to make that difference and make that change. Brothers, there's a lot I could comment on, and I hope to comment on more in the future about specifically this and what it means to live a transformed life in order to face what may be some very difficult times ahead. But I want to challenge you all with, I think, three key things. One, I was thinking on my way over here to make this little clip part of my power walk routine. Brothers, I want, I want you to see if you can move first in a spirit of repentance, that is, in order to lay a foundation for the spiritual life and moving forward in anything, if you have, are unrepentant from what you may have said or done in the past against God, your neighbor, or even yourself, you need to walk through a journey of repentance. And part of that repentance is figuring out what it means for you to forge ahead with a positive vision of how you can move forward in a transformed way, how you can amend your life. But part of that immense of life, brothers, I find that Jesus gave us a pretty fundamental instruction in the Garden of Gethsemane. When he asked his disciples who fell asleep, why can you not watch one hour with me? Brothers, I think it's incumbent upon us every day to spend one hour with our Lord. For some, that may sound like a lot of time, but it really isn't. It's what, a little of what, 4.25% of our day, 4.5%. But in any case, I think, we, I think we could give at least an hour to God in prayer, in reflection, in some kind of devotion. And thirdly, brothers, I want you to look in a more specific way at the journey of Jesus Christ. You know, ultimately, he calls us to follow him. So he sets the way. He sets the model. He is the pattern. He is the journey. So, brothers, look more closely at him. You know, in a lot of what happens in your life, ask that classical question, what would Jesus do? Brothers, in your life moving forward, do what you think Jesus would do in everything you engage in. 
Heavenly Father, we just ask that you shed your light upon all the men listening right now, Father. Give them the gifts that they need to walk forward in your image with power, with strength, with conviction. For those who are fathers of families, Father, help them become the strong patriarchs with called to be, but not only in their families, but also their communities and their churches. Father, through the power of your Holy Spirit, we just ask that you may come powerfully through your spirit to all the men who are listening, to give them the gifts they need to persevere and to move forward steadfastly in the days to come. And through the intercession of all the saints, we ask all these things for your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Brothers, God bless you. And this new year especially, God bless America.